making interiors fun and efficient. Hi, I'm Ivan LaCroix and this is the Detailers Business Academy, where we strive to take you from detailer to entrepreneur. Now, interiors and efficiency and fun are not words that generally go together. But in this little video, we'll try to make it that way. First of all, increasing your interior efficiency isn't that difficult. You need to do a few things. First of all, take a video of yourself doing an interior. I mean, just set the camera up in the corner of the shop or in your work environment and film yourself doing an interior. You'll see a lot of things happening. You'll see yourself getting in and out and in and out and in and out of the car many, many times, looking for things. Those are all things that hurt efficiency. So to increase your efficiency, the first step is learn where you're inefficient. Find out what inefficiencies you have. That way you can correct them. Now, the next thing you can do is reduce. Yes, just reduce. And by reduce, I mean reduce the amount of products you use. You don't need to use as many products as you're using right now. Trust me, you only need one or two chemicals and most interior jobs can be done. Now, there are always exceptions to every rule, but in general, you don't need to go that far. You don't need to use 18 different chemicals on the interior. No. The other thing you need to reduce is your time and the water usage. Now, people may start off wetting the interior down, and that's the last thing you want to do. The least amount of water you put into your interior, the least amount of water you have to take out of the interior, and the happier your customers will be. If you're in a northern climate, getting the interior wet in the winter is not a fun thing. And then you have to leave the car run with fans and heat, and ah, it's just not good. So the least amount of water you put in your interior, the better it is. Now there are a couple tools you can add to your arsenal. One of them, if you don't already have it, is compressed air. Compressed air is an incredible interior detailing tool. And my regime for doing an interior is I always wash the exterior. But before washing the exterior, I take my airline, my blow gun, and blow under the seats, blow the cracks, blow everything down. Yes, it creates a cloud of dust inside the car, but it gets it out from the areas where I don't want it, like under the seats. You want to do things like blow the french fries out from between the console and the seat tracks, things like that. Blow it all forward. As you're washing the exterior of the car, let the dust settle. Then quickly go in with a vacuum cleaner. You're not going all out with the vacuuming here, you're just picking up the majority. You just want to make it clean for you to work and see what you're dealing with. Next, you want to plan your interior. You want to have a standard operating procedure. You want every interior you do to go the same way. You don't want to change it up for every interior. It might be a little more interesting, but that's when you miss things. That's when you skip areas, and that's where you get inefficiencies. So if you have a standard operating procedure that you do every interior the same way every time, you won't have to think about what you're doing. You'll just do it naturally. And same thing, especially if you have employees, you definitely want that standard operating procedure in place. Now, with interiors, there are a few different ways of doing it, and there's no wrong way, but the way I find the most efficient is the in and out method. So I go into the driver's area of the vehicle, and I clean everything within reach from the driver's seat. Then I move to the back seat and do everything on the driver's side back seat, and then the passenger side back seat, and then finish with the passenger seat up front. This allows me a couple different things. First of all, I'm not going in and out with different steps. So when I go into the interior, I'm simply going in. I'll start with the dashboard, I'll start with the console, then the seat, then the carpet, then the door panel, and then the windows. And I'm done with that area. I can close the door, I'm out of there, finished. Then I move to the next area, and then the next area, and the next area. Now, there are a couple interior tools that make this process difficult. If you're using, let's say, a tornador, well, a tornador tends to blow stuff around on the interior. So you're just creating more work for yourself. Now, a tornador is a great tool and it has its place, but if you're using it on every interior job, mm, no. Same thing with steam. Steam is a great tool for interiors, but should it be used on every interior? Probably not. Compressed air, great tool. That one I use on every interior. But other things, you need good quality microfiber towels. You need lots of them and you need to have them ready and handy. 
I like to do most of my interior cleaning using a damp cloth in a rinseless solution. And you want to choose a rinseless solution that doesn't have many additives to it and one that isn't soapy. So a good polymer based rinseless solution will do the job for you. And you'd be amazed what it can remove from the interior. You know those steering wheels that just seem to have a quarter inch of gunk on them? Well, one pass with a rinseless and it's gone. No, you don't need to use an APC. Now in interiors, like every detailing job, but especially on interiors, go with the least invasive chemical first. Try that. If that doesn't work, then you can step up. You always want to neutralize your interior to bring it back to pH neutral. Because if you leave it with a caustic solution, or you leave it with a soapy solution, or if you leave it with an acidic solution, that is going to attract dirt and make the interior get dirtier faster. Not something your customer is paying for, and not something they necessarily like. So with your interior, go with the mildest chemical you can first. Try that. If it doesn't work, then you can step it up. And there are some other tools that you can use on an interior that aren't necessarily common, but do a great job. The first one is your polishers. Yes, the rotary and a DA. You need both. And let me explain the difference between the two. First of all, the rotary is for cloth seats. Now, if you're old enough to remember velour seats, it works on that too. But on cloth seats, a rotary does a great job. You can use a number of different solutions with it. Starting with the upholstery foam in a can, that works great with a rotary and a good, big, fluffy wool pad that has been used before. You don't want to use a new wool pad. No. If you use a new wool pad, you'll be picking lint out of every corner of that car for days. So use a good old pad that you wouldn't use on paint anymore, but put it in the washing machine, get it clean, and use that for your interior. So you spray the upholstery foam in the seat, let it dwell a few seconds, and then polish it off. You'll be polishing off not only the dirt, but also bringing up the liquid. Unlike an extractor that leaves the seats damp, this they'll be dry in 10 or 15 minutes. So great for delivering it to your customer back sooner. The sooner you can deliver it to your customer, the more space you have, and the happier you'll be, the happier they'll be. Now, I mentioned a DA. What do you use a DA for? Well, use a DA and a microfiber pad. Yes, not anything else, a microfiber pad. And again, you use an upholstery cleaning solution or a leather cleaning solution. Put a little bit on your pad. You don't need a lot. You don't want to sling product everywhere. And then polish your leather seats. Yes, you'll be polishing your leather seats with a DA. It's amazing how quickly it goes and it'll be the cleanest your seats have ever been. Even if you're using a dedicated upholstery or a leather brush, you won't get it as clean as polishing it with a DA and a microfiber pad. The microfiber pad, plus the vibration and the movement of the DA, allows it to reach into every little pore of that leather and get it super clean. You're gonna need multiple pads. Whether you're doing the wool pad and the rotary, which is commonly known as the Nathan Flannel Upholstery Cleaning Method, because Nathan is probably one of the first people to put it out there, and he put it on the internet, so kudos to him. Cleaning leather with a DA has no name attached to it, but it really, really works well. So give it a try. You'll be extremely surprised and happy with the results. Now, speaking of an extractor, do you need an extractor to do an interior? Actually, probably not. We had a shop that did 20, 30 cars a day. We use the extractor once or twice a year. Yeah, didn't use it much. The extractor is a great tool when it's needed but it is not needed on every interior. An example, seats. Now, cloth seats. Taking extractor to them, yeah, gets them clean. But then they dry, and you see little things coming back. That's because you wet the foam a little too much, and that's called wicking, and it's bringing that back. So you have to do it again, wasting your time, wasting your energy, and the customer gets a wet car. That's not good. There are other considerations to take. Seats these days have airbags, electronics, sensors, all sorts of things in the seat that you don't want to get wet. So taking extractor to a seat, maybe not the best alternative. The next thing is carpets. Now, extracting carpets, sure, you're gonna get it cleaned down to the jute. Is that what your customer's paying you for? Hmm, maybe, maybe not. The other thing is, you want to do carpets dry as much as possible. Again, the less water you bring into the car, the less water you need to take out of the car. But the reason you want to do them dry is 
If you start by extraction, you're just creating mud. You're making the problem worse. So you want to dry extract way of looking at it. So using a brush and using a vacuum cleaner, you can get a lot of that dirt out of the carpet without a drop of water. And without using a drop of water, you actually get more of it out. The next thing is with extraction, creates dampness. And it's a big heavy tool that's hard to move around. Now, I mentioned Tornador before. They have one tool that is amazing on interiors. Virtually replaces your extractor. And that is the Tornador Velocity Vac. It attaches to your vacuum cleaner and an airline. Now, they make two models. One is just a straight vacuum cleaner and airline. The other one has a little bowl on the bottom of it for chemicals. Yeah, didn't really use the bowl that much. But the dry extraction capabilities of it are amazing. You don't need an extractor if you have a good compressor and a vacuum cleaner and the Velocity Vac. And as you know, I'm not one to mention specific products, but this is one that really works, really does the job well. Now, other things. I've seen people getting into cars with Q-tips. No, those are for your ears, uh, not for cars. There are ways of getting into vents. There are ways of getting into tiny cracks and crevices that just require a microfiber towel and a blowgun. So try this the next time you're in a car. Take your microfiber towel, put it in your bucket of rinse solution and wring it out till it's almost dry. You don't want it too wet. Now put it over that dash vent. Take your air gun, blow through the towel, remove the towel, and blow again. And look at that vent. It's perfectly clean. It's as if you'd gone in there with Q-tips and all sorts of stuff and spent five minutes on it. You spent 10 seconds. Same thing with the emblem in the center of the steering wheel. There's always that little line of dust around it and crud that it's hard to remove. Now, if you have a steamer, yeah, removes it great. But if you don't have a steamer, but you have an airline and a microfiber towel, again, put the microfiber towel over it, blow through the towel, remove towel, blow again, you're done. It's as simple as that. Now, speaking of steam, some people use steam on every surface of the interior. That takes a lot of time and it's not necessary. Now, steam has great advantages. There are a lot of things you can use steam for and you should use steam for. Those of us in a Northern climate, those salt rings around the carpet, yeah, steam is great for that. The other thing, steam is great at getting things out of cracks and crevices, but steaming a whole panel, no, you're just wasting your time. Using steam to get into the cracks and crevices and then using your rinseless stamp and towel to wipe the surface clean and equalize everything is great. That worked wonderfully well and that's a great use of steam. You're not burning through that distilled water that you're putting in your steamer gallons at a time and you're targeting the steam where it needs to be. Now, a little 101 on how steam works. Think of steam as a bombardment, yes. So your steam is a 300 and some degrees. Your panel, yeah, somewhere around 70 degrees. If you're in an air conditioned shop, you know exactly what temperature it's at. That temperature differential is what makes steam work well. Now, if your shop environment was 330 degrees and the inside of your steamer is 330 degrees, it would come out as water. Simple as that. The temperature differential makes it so that that hot water that is going through that hose, as soon as it hits that cooler atmosphere, explodes, expands. And that expansion is what is happening on the surface. So you're projecting that steam onto the surface. And when you've projected it onto the surface, it lands there. But that surface is cooler than it is. So the molecules in the water explode again. They expand. That little explosion is what breaks up the dirt. You want to wipe that off as soon as possible and get it off the surface. That is how steam works. It works wonderfully well. Do you need chemicals with steam? No. The action of the steamer does the job. And speaking of the action versus chemicals, again, the Tornador. If you're using a Tornador, do not put a chemical in it. If you're not willing to have your children drink what's in the bowl of your Tornador, you shouldn't be putting it in there. It's as simple as that. The Tornador atomizes so finely that anything that you're putting in there, you're breathing it in. It's going into your skin. It's not good for you. People have gone to the hospital because of using harsh chemicals in a Tornador. You don't want to be one of those people. Now, if you do a test, and I did a training session at the shop a number of years ago, and to this day, the shop is still using the same Tornador-specific fluid that I introduced them to. 
So I did this training. And during the training, I explained to all the employees, because they had multiple employees, that putting harsh chemicals in the Tornador was not a good idea. And there was literally a cloud of APC floating in that shop. They were using so much of it. We switched them over to water. And the two days I was there for the training, yeah, water works great. Never thought it would work. It's beautiful. I don't think we're out of the driveway, maybe an hour. Get a call from the boss. And he says, they put the chemicals back in the Tornador. So I told the boss to go to the local grocery store, pick up some food coloring, the food coloring of his choice, and a gallon of distilled water. Now, put a few drops of the food coloring into the distilled water. Mix it up. Take the label off the distilled water bottle. Bring it to the shop a few days later. And that's what he did. He explained to the employees, on my instruction, that this was a experimental, Tornador-specific chemical. Had no smell, no odor, and was extremely potent. It needed to be diluted at least 10 to 1. Because if you put it straight in your Tornador, you're going to die. Well, they put green tinted water in their Tornador, diluted 10 to 1, and found that that was the best interior cleaning solution they had ever used. Why? Because that's what they thought. And using the chemicals in the Tornador, they thought was making it better. Years later, he still has green tinted water in the Tornadors. And he's had people leave his employment, go to other shops, and call him up and say, can I buy some of that Tornador food? What they're using here just doesn't work as well. It's what you think. Perception is a big part of reality. If you're using a Tornador, just put water in it. You really don't need to get the food color unless you like a certain color in your Tornador. So interior detailing comes down to being efficient and thinking about what you're doing, having a plan, following the plan, using the least amount of water possible and using technology to your advantage. Thanks for watching and please subscribe, even hit that notification bell and share these videos if you can. And if you have any questions, comments, thoughts, or ideas, please leave them below. I'm always happy to answer. Thank you.